I think uh, we've had some pretty outstanding talks today. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am privileged. Uh, I think I've said that a, a lot today. So I've been privileged to announce a lot of good speakers today, but truly honored to, to introduce to you a guy that um, that I hold up in very high regard as one of my personal heroes in this business, and really not just in this business, but as a man. So it's my privilege, it's my honor to introduce to you the creator of Security Onion and the founder of Security Onion Solutions, Mr. Doug Burks. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, again, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of you being here today. It means a great deal to me to see this community growing and thriving. Uh, and again, I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, uh, to Talos, Midbit, Applied Network Defense, and Dualcom. Uh, so if you see John from Dualcom here, make sure you say hello to him. Uh, he's a great guy, so we, again, greatly appreciate his sponsorship and greatly appreciate him flying all the way and being here. I want to say thanks again to my family at Secure Onion Solutions. So all you guys are, and gals are doing great work, and I appreciate all your work there. Thanks again to all of our speakers. Great talks today, great content. This last one, not so much, uh, but we'll have some fun maybe. So thank you all again for all of those great talks. Thanks again to the Georgia Cyber Center for hosting us and all the folks who helped out today. Really appreciate all your hard work in making this event a success. Thanks again to my good friends Chris and Phil for the embarrassing Big Doug picture out there. <laughs> I've already warned both Chris and Phil that payback is double. So, duly warned, right? So speaking of Chris Sanders, so we, uh, earlier in the year we published this Security Onion book. Folks have been asking for a long, long time, hey, your documentation is great, but I'd really like it in a printed book format. And so we did that. We took our documentation, we made it available on Amazon. You can purchase that. And we made the decision to uh, donate all the proceeds of those sales to the Rural Technology Fund. So, Mr. Chris Sanders, come on up here. So thank you to everyone who's purchased a copy of this book. That's all the proceeds from the book. And in addition, Secure Onion Solutions, on the behalf of the company and the entire community represented here today, is giving you an additional donation for $4,000 to the Rural Technology Fund. For all the great work that you're doing, please keep up the great work. And one more thing. We're donating Big Doug to you. You got to take it home. I have just the place. <laughs> I bet you do. All right. So thank you all for, for purchasing copies of that. Uh, and the second edition is now available, so you can pick that up. And again, all of those proceeds go to the Rural Technology Fund. It's a really great effort run by some really great folks doing some really great work. So thank you for that. Next up, I want to say thank you to everybody who has downloaded a copy of Security Onion. We are now over 800,000 downloads of our ISO image. That's not the only way that you can download our software, but that's the primary way that most folks get it. So it would have never occurred to me way back in 2008 that I started this little hobby project that we would now be over 800,000 downloads. It blows my mind. So thank you all very much for your active participation in our community. So, what I'd like to talk about today is supercharging your SOC. How do you supercharge your security operations center? The subtitle of this talk is Building a Better Bertha. Now, some of you are asking the question, who is Bertha? A better question might be, what is Bertha? So, Big Doug out there, that was an embarrassing picture, that was kind of an embarrassing thing that happened, but 
We're going to talk about some other embarrassing pictures. If you remember a couple years ago at Security Onion Conference, I showed this embarrassing picture of me as a kid with my homemade Nintendo arcade. Right? That was kind of embarrassing. Going to share some more embarrassing pictures from my childhood. It's a lot of fun. So what is Bertha? Think back to your first vehicle. You know, for some of you, it was that sweet 16. Your parents bought you a brand new Ford Mustang. For others, maybe not so much. Maybe it was something like this, birth of the wonder truck, as in, it's a wonder I'm still alive. Okay, so do we have any classic truck fans in the audience who might wager a guess as to the year of this classic antique? So we're, we're getting close, it's a 1967 Ford F100. Would anybody like to wager a guess as to how much we paid for this fine vehicle? Y'all are really close. $375, and it was ours, out the door, right? And oh, by the way, when we bought it, it didn't look nearly this good. This actually looks better, right? <laughs> so this was my first vehicle, okay? Birth of the Wonder Truck. And let me tell you, this thing has everything, okay? Under the hood was a 240 cubic inch inline six cylinder, so it could do zero to 60 in 5.3 minutes. <laughs> the brakes didn't work too well, but hey, real men use engine braking anyway, right? Hi, Chris. Now, it's kind of hard to see, because there's kind of a sign draped on the side, but the original bed was totally destroyed. It was a wooden bed. The wood had rotted. The cross members were rusted through, so we tore off the original bed altogether. We built a brand new wooden stepside bed because we're hardcore like that. And, you know, the wooden stepside bed only rubbed the tires a little bit. Just a little bit, okay? Now, on that wooden stepside bed was a toolbox to carry jumper cables because I needed them all the time. Okay? Now, would you just look at this? Under the toolbox, that was for you, Wes, is a bonus PA speaker that was wired up to my CB radio microphone so I could key up the mic and say, hey, get out of the way, my brakes don't work. Right? Now, we did have one oddball tire because conformity is boring. Nobody wants to be a conformist. You want to be a non-conformist, right? So we had three matching tires, but zero matching mirrors. So that was kind of unique. But you know, I focus on less on what's behind us and more in front, because I'm a forward thinker, right? Now, I do want you to notice the artisanal spray paint job with a racing stripe down the middle because that's good for another five mile per hour right there right all this thing really needs just some fancy rgb lights it's good to go right truck of your dreams all right so that was my first vehicle uh, and as as unique as it was uh, as with as many problems as i had with it it did have at least some utility. It was a workhorse, right? I could jump in the thing and I could go pull some stuff. I could haul some stuff. I could move some stuff around. And you know, I learned a lot by working on this truck. So it certainly had some learning value. So it was really a workhorse for me. Now, today, I don't drive Bertha anymore, right? That thing's sitting in a wood somewhere. Uh, and so today I drive a 2018 GMC Sierra. This is a nice truck, right? It's a workhorse too, but it's faster. It's got a 6.2 liter V8. It goes zero to 60 in seconds rather than minutes. It's more powerful. It's got a 6.2 liter V8, 420 horsepower. It's smoother. It rides nice, right? It just kind of floats down the road. So my new truck, it has a lot of advantages, but it does have at least one disadvantage compared to good old Bertha. And that's that when you pop the hood, that engine compartment, it's so tightly packed, 
right? It's so hard to work on that thing. And you've got to have special tools, and you've got to have special training. I see some nodding over there. You feel my pain, right? They don't make them like they used to. In good old Bertha, I could crawl inside the engine compartment to change the spark plugs. You can't do that in modern vehicles, right? So what does all this have to do with security operations centers anyway? What does all this have to do with Security Onion anyway? When I first started in security, the tools kind of felt like good old Bertha, right? I worked in a lot of small shops with small budgets, so we may only have had one or two commercial tools if we could have afforded that. And then maybe we tried to kind of fill some gaps with some free open source tools here and there, but there really was no continuity. It wasn't a smooth experience. Uh, and so, you know, many commercial vendors will sell you on a smoother ride, but the problem is they may have the hood welded shut, right, where you can't get in there and work on the product, you can't get in there and change your own spark plugs, do what you need to do. Ultimately, defense is hard, but it's important. And so it's important for us to make defense easy for others. Right, so that's really where we're coming from. We want to take security on you. We want it to continue to be the workhorse that it has been in your environments. But we want to make it faster. We want to make it more powerful. We want to make it smoother. But at the same time, keep it easy to work on. We want you to be able to pop the hood, change your spark plugs, change your oil, do what you need to do. So that's kind of setting the stage for what we want to talk about today. So let's talk a little bit about the past year since the last Secured Onion Conference. I know uh, a lot of folks were here last year. A lot of new folks, a lot of new faces, so we appreciate you being here, but I'll kind of recap some of the things that we've done over the past year to try to further this goal of building a better Bertha, making it faster, more powerful, smoother. So starting off with uh, a utility called SO Import PCAP. So if you're new to Security Onion, this is the absolute easiest way to get started with Security Onion. You download our ISO image, you simply run SO Import PCAP, and you give it the path to a PCAP file, and that's all you have to do. It sets up the entire system for you, and it goes and analyzes that PCAP through Snort or Suricata, runs it through Bro, generates all the nice protocol logs, and you're good to go. It's super fast, it's super easy. We made a lot of changes to it to make it even faster and even smoother. So now it uses less than four gigabytes of RAM. So we're really proud of that tool. A lot of folks are using that for their ad hoc P PCAP analysis. Uh, and we hope that it does a great job for you. So that's SO import PCAP. Now in the world of production sensors, I'm not just looking at single PCAP analysis at a time. Real production sensors, we have now moved from PF ring, which is what we had used in years past for kind of spinning up additional instances of Snort, Suricata, and Bro to handle higher traffic loads. We now switch to AF packet. What that means is that we're going to be even more powerful than we were in the past, and we're especially going to be smoother because we're no longer having to rely on that PF ring kernel module, which could periodically cause issues on some systems. So that does make things significantly more smoother. Now, in listening to our community, a lot of folks uh, love the fact that over the last couple of years, we have heavily uh, invested in the Elastic Stack and heavily integrated with the Elastic Stack. And so a lot of folks have asked us to give them the option of not only the open source version of the Elastic Stack that we integrate by default, but also the capability of switching to the features version of the Elastic Stack that's licensed under the Elastic License. So we made that as quick and easy as possible. It's one command, SO Elastic Features, you run that, it takes care of all the dirty work of switching your Docker images behind the scenes and getting that up and running for you. Now, one of the really nice features that Elastic provides now for free in their basic license, doesn't cost you a dime, is native Elastic Search authentication, which includes role-based access controls. Let me give you an example. One of our great customers, uh, they came to us and they said, hey, we've got this security operations center, we've got a lot of really smart analysts. 
They get really curious at times. They like to play around. They like to modify dashboards, and that might cause problems for other users. So how can I kind of lock them down and prevent those dashboards from being modified? And so as it turns out, this role-based access control allows us to do that. So what we did was we created this program, again, making it as quick and easy and as smooth as possible for folks to not only switch to Elastic Features, but enable that authentication. And it takes all of your existing user accounts, creates those corresponding accounts inside of Elastic, and sets them as limited users by default. Right? So that way, your standard SOC analyst, they're not going to be able to modify your dashboards, but you as kind of the super user, you can still go in and make changes and manage those user accounts as you see fit. So again, we did a lot of integration work to make that as smooth as possible. Uh, so that's what it looks like uh, in the new Kibana interface for logging in with your native Elastic credentials. And there you can kind of see uh, a screenshot of the user management piece inside of Kibana itself. So you can go in and modify permissions, and this user has access to this, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's what we've done with the Elastic Stack. Now let's talk about the setup process itself. One of the things that folks have asked for for a really long time is the ability to run setup over interactive SSH session. Right? Traditionally, our setup process has been kind of graphically driven. Uh, it's X11 window based. So you could do X11 forwarding over SSH, but that might be clunky at times. Uh, we had another means of kind of automating setup using sosetup.conf, but that had is a, its own issues. So really, it made sense for us to invest some time to make this setup process go much more smoothly over a standard SSH connection, uh, just using standard Whiptail CLI. And that is a very smooth process now. Now, at the same time, we made uh, another change to setup. So now we have this thing called SO Setup Minimal. And so this really kind of came out of the use case of a typical home user. Right? If you want to monitor your home network, you probably don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on sensor hardware. You probably want to go to Amazon and purchase some small form factor box. And it may only have 4 gigabytes of RAM. And so in order to accommodate that use case, it used to be our, our requirements for including all the elastic stack goodness was a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM. So we took a good hard look at all of our processes, all of our configuration. Uh, we ended up taking our, our long stash parsers, moving those into Elasticsearch in just node, doing all the heavy lifting there, and that allowed us to make log stash much more lightweight. So we can now run in less than four gigabytes of RAM. So you can run SO setup minimal and your home network uh, with a, a small form factor box with four gigabytes of RAM, and it's going to perform pretty well. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Next up, Suricata 4.1.5. Now on the surface, this may seem like just a standard Suricata release. This may not seem that much different than Suricata 4.1.4. After all, it's just a 0.1 increment of a release. However, there's one key feature that's included in Suricata 4.1.5 that we'll talk about in just a minute. Next up, Zeek 3.0. This is the big one, right? The friends at uh, bro slash Zeek have been talking about this renaming of Bro to Zeek. This is the very first version where it's officially renamed, and it's now officially called Zeek. So that was released just, uh, what, a week ago? A week and a half ago. Uh, we do have initial packages built for Zeek 3.0, uh, and we're going to have to do testing and, and feedback and things like that. We'll probably end up waiting for Zeek 301 because that's just around the corner. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do our testing and we'll put that out there. But just like I said before, that Suricata has an interesting feature in 4.1.5. Zeek 3.0 has an interesting feature as well. Here's what it means. Any AWS folks in the crowd? You have AWS deployments? Yeah, we got some folks out there. So. Everybody asks, how do you run Security Onion in the cloud? Typically, we've had some 
some possible scenarios for doing that in the past, but AWS recently announced traffic mirroring. Real traffic mirroring, like a virtual tap or a virtual span port. Now this comes across as a VXLAN encoded stream, and that's where Suricata 415 comes in because it can do VXLAN decoding. And Zeek 3.0 can do VXLAN decoding. So now that means you can see through the clouds. And you could say, would you just look at that? It's for you, Wes. All right. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Now, all of that that I've talked about so far, that's kind of the traditional Security Onion 1604 version uh, that's our current production release. Now, you've heard a couple of times today about Hybrid Hunter. And so we want to make sure that there's an understanding here that Hybrid Hunter is simply the code name for the next major release for Security Onion, right? This is not separate from Security Onion. It is the future Security Onion that is simply code named Hybrid Hunter. What does all that mean? Well, number one, today in Security Onion 1604, we package our software using traditional Ubuntu Debian packages. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right? Uh, recently, I, I was working on a package. It literally took me four weeks just to get one package built correctly. And in today's agile environment, that just ain't going to cut it anymore. So let's move to containers. We started this move with the introduction of the Elastic Stack. We have the Elastic Stack built in containers. That was our way of dipping our toes into the water of the container ecosystem. And that's been a good experience for us. Uh, we've learned a lot of valuable lessons. We feel like we've got a good grasp on the technology and we're ready to embrace it wholeheartedly. And so Hybrid Hunter is going to be all container based. Those containers are going to be orchestrated with SaltStack. We're already using SaltStack today in Security Onion 1604. And now SaltStack is, Salt is going to take an even greater role in this new Security Onion Hybrid Hunter. Now, all that means that we're no longer limited to just Ubuntu. Because we always get the question for years and years and years, especially from our government friends, hey, what about Red Hat? What about CentOS? That's what this is all about, being able to support not just Ubuntu, but also Red Hat, CentOS, anywhere you can run these containers. Uh, we, can, we can add the support via SaltStack to be able to integrate those containers right in. And as you've heard many times today, we realize that network visibility gets harder and harder. We all realize that. And so we want to be integrating with even more endpoint telemetry to fill in those blind spots in our visibility. All right, so a brief review about Hybrid Hunter and timelines of it. We announced Hybrid Hunter at last year's Security Onion Conference. Mike Reeves had started working on Hybrid Hunter back last January when he joined the company. Uh, and he did a tremendous amount of work from January to that conference last year. And so that was released officially November the 3rd of last year. It's Hybrid Hunter 101. That was the initial release that was put out there. And then just a month later, in December of 2018, Hybrid Hunter 105 included Fleet for OS Query. Again, integrating with those endpoint technologies, things that you heard Josh talk about earlier today. We made that even better in Hybrid Hunter 106, which was in January, and this, this added OS query real, rule packs. And then 107 was in April of this year, and that included the Hive. You heard about the Hive earlier today. We're really excited about that integration and making it even better at every single release that we do. In May, uh, we included fleet auto install packages. So Josh did some great work on that and making sure that those packages are already built for you and you're able to deploy those uh, packages out to your endpoints and just make that as smooth of a process as possible. Now just recently in July, we announced Hybrid Hunter Alpha. We had finally reached that certain number of features where we felt like this was a good point to call this the alpha release. Uh, so one of the things that was included in that release was a new web interface called Sensoroni. This is kind of the replacement for CatMe. If you're familiar with the, the current PCAP interface in Security Onion, 
uh, called CapMe. This is kind of the replacement for that. It's got a more modern interface. There you can see kind of the packet overview. You can drill into those packets and get the details as you would expect to see there. And of course, you can also flip to an ASCII transcript version of that. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. Jason Ertl spent uh, a good amount of time working on that. He did a really great job. So we're really appreciative to Jason for all of his work on Censoroni. And so that was the Hybrid Hunter Alpha release. But all of that stuff that we've just talked about is all in the rearview mirror. And I said before that we want to be forward thinkers. So now let's talk about what's in front of us. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are excited to announce Hybrid Hunter Alpha 2 drops today. This is Hybrid Hunter 1.1.1. It includes Suricata 415 with that great VXLAN decoding. It includes Bro 264, the Hive 340, improved Grafana integration. We didn't talk too much about Grafana earlier, but that's a great way of keeping track of the health of your Security Onion Hybrid Hunter deployment. Uh, and so Mike has done a really great job on making sure that Grafana is amazing right out of the box. Sensoroni is now faster and smoother than it was before. We talked before about uh, taking our log stash parsers and moving them into Elasticsearch ingest node. We're now doing that in Hybrid Hunter as well, right? Which makes our parsing faster. It uses less resources. So it's uh, a much higher performance environment. Lots and lots of bug fixes. We've been on a bug squashing uh, tour for the past couple of weeks of trying to make sure that this is as stable and as reliable as possible. Uh, and then also you heard this morning Josh Brower talking about playbooks and attack navigator and all that cool stuff that he talked about. Guess what? All that's already built in to Security Onion Hybrid Hunter Alpha 2. And finally, the big point of this release is that Mike Reeves has worked tirelessly on building a minimal ISO image to make this even easier than it was before. Before you would take your own Ubuntu or your own CentOS, you would clone our GitHub repo, you would run a script and go through some things. He's made that process even easier, even smoother. So you can download this minimal ISO image. Note that it is a minimal ISO image, meaning that it will still need internet access. So you can't do this in air-gapped environments. But uh, we think it'll be the fastest and smoothest installation of Hybrid Hunter to date. So that's what we're dropping today. So now let's talk about the future. What does the roadmap look like? Well, we're currently working on a user authentication subsystem. So we hope to get that integrated very, very soon. For folks that are tracking Red Hat 8, CentOS 8, CentOS 8 just dropped very recently. We've already done the initial work to try to figure out what it's going to take for us to support that. It's going to mean some changes for uh, our existing images and integrations. But we have a couple of path forwards on that. We know, which, uh, we know how we can achieve success there. So we're looking forward to fully supporting CentOS 8 on the very near future. We're looking forward to more integrations and more tuning. But we need testing and we need feedback. Right? We don't want to be developing this in a vacuum. We want to make sure that we're developing something that's relevant for you in your environments. So it's not production ready. We don't want you to be uh, relying on it for production usage. But if you can spin it up in your environment uh, and give it a good test with some really good real traffic and give us some feedback on how it works for you, we would really, really appreciate that. So, that's all of our software stuff. But as always, there is just one more thing. Uh, last year, we did announce hardware appliances at the conference. Uh, and uh, folks have been really, really excited about hardware appliances. Uh, and we've had a lot of interest and a lot of demand in that. Um, one of the things that we have done is that we have built a new high throughput appliance, which we just received the prototype yesterday afternoon. So we will have this on display tomorrow at B-Sides Augusta. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in learning more details about that, please come by our booth, talk to us. 
we'd be glad to give you a, a demo of it and show it off to you. Uh, we haven't done any official benchmarks, but based on the specs of this machine, it's a beast. It's a Bertha. It's a workhorse. We're expecting some really great numbers out of it. So if you're interested in appliances, come check us out tomorrow. So, did I forget anything? Oh, you're good. All right. I don't know about good, but I'm done. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, sir. So the question is, the user authentication subsystem will be integration with LDAP. That's not something that we have in the initial release. It might be something that we could look at in future releases. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Absolutely. So in terms of pivoting, today in Security Onion 16, you go into Kibana, you drill into the log, you click on the ID field, and it pivots you over to Catme. That same hyperlink exists in Hybrid Hunter, and instead of taking you to Catme, it takes you to Censoroni, and there's your packets. And you can download it and do whatever you need to right there. So it's this, a very similar user experience. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right, hearing none, I want to say thank you to you all again. I really appreciate you being here. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at B-Sides Augusta, and we'll see you next year at Security Union Conference 2020. Thank you all very much.